Hi, my name is Vincent Simone. In today's program, I'm going to tell you why it's completely fine to hit with a bent arm on your forehand. Let's get right to it. In professional tennis, you can find examples of great players hitting with a bent arm at contact point and also with a straight arm, okay? Players like Roger Federer, Alcaraz, they're usually hitting with a straight arm, but then you have players like Djokovic who have a bent arm. I have a bent arm, a lot of players have a bent arm. This isn't really the thing that needs to be focused on. So when you turn, the elbow is bent, okay? It's not straight like this, okay? Some people, you know, go like this. You don't need to extend yet, okay? That's for later. As long as you get enough radius away from your body, you're good. The swing needs to go inside to outside. You don't wanna feel like you swing forwards, okay? This would be getting jammed. You wanna feel like you get as much radius as possible. The more radius you can cover, the more power you're gonna be able to produce. At a fast speed, it's kind of tough to always, you know, be at the right distance away from the ball where you can hit with a fully extended arm. Ideally, it's good, but most players will commonly be in what I call the double bend position, where we have a letter L in the wrist for a firm contact point, and there's another letter L in the forearm here. And this is completely acceptable, it's completely normal. Don't worry about having a bent arm at contact point on your forehand. Some players will get all the way out here, and that's great as well. But what you should know is that in both instances, whether it's a single bend of just the slot in the wrist, or a double bend where this elbow is also bent, the arm is extremely loose. So in both cases, it doesn't really matter, okay? This does not mean that you have permission to start strong arming the ball, okay? We wanna feel like our arm is flying out of our socket. The body needs to move more than the racket, okay? We're violently rotating our body into the ball and the arm is kind of just getting a whiplash effect behind us. So it doesn't matter if our elbows, you know, bent a little bit, slightly bent. Okay, we don't want it too bent, okay? And it doesn't matter if it's out here. What you should know is that there should be a space here, okay? If there isn't a space, okay, this means that your arm is too close to your body. As long as there is some distance in between here, I would say about one or two tennis balls away, you're good to do whatever you please, okay? And it doesn't really matter, but the key thing is keeping at least a bend in the wrist, okay? And this happens from the slot, right? We go from pat the dog, strings parallel with the ground, okay? The wrist is already back, but it's loose. I throw my body, and because the arm has no tension, right, it's dead weight, it will catch back in the slot naturally. You don't have to force your butt cap to the ball like you're pointing a flashlight, like you're Scooby-Doo, you know, looking for a monster, looking for the beast around the corner, okay? You can just throw your body, and it will naturally catch back, but you have to consciously keep it back, okay? And don't release it until the ball has left your strings, okay? Forget about this, forget about the arm, okay? Do what's comfortable for you. All you have to do is make sure that you get the slot and you're set, you're good to go. Thanks for watching this video. Um, if you wanna learn more techniques and take your game to an advanced level, if you wanna you know, get past the intermediate 3.0, 3.5 level that 85% of players are stuck at, I have a complete online course that will teach you the biomechanics of modern tennis so you can start doing better in tournaments get through a few rounds, and get past a 4.0 level. Click the link down below and take the course. In any event, thanks for tuning in and use what you've learned to modernize your game. Ciao.